Good morning, South Beach. Here we are at the world famous Fifth Street Gym. Tip of the week sponsored by Antoho Coffee. My tip of the week this week is building a fighter. This is really for managers and trainers, a little more than the actual fighter, but it's about learning on the job. This is not the amateurs, this is the professionals. It's not sparring. It's about timing everything in, in the right manner. Uh, developing a fighter with low level of competition because they have to get used to traveling, sleeping in a different bed, the weigh-in being 36 hours sometime before the fight, fighting much later at night. All these details come with experience and getting used to it, trying to time the weigh-in on time, the rehydration. Fighters naturally want to eat and gorge themselves after weighing. They have to be careful. They can't overdo it. You have to manage and control that. And with experience with a particular fighter, what's best for him or her may not be the best for the next or the previous fighter. Your experience combined with them learning on the job will give you the opportunity to make them the best version of themselves that night. It's about managing the type of opponent they're going to fight against. A low level opponent, a very winnable fight so that when all the other details, what shoes they're going to wear, what their walk-in clothes are going to be, how their hand are, hands are getting wrapped. The new gloves, fighting with the 8 ounce or 10 ounce pro gloves. You're getting used to all those things. You can't also have a super challenging fight. This is enough of a challenge. Very many times Olympic gold medals have busted out as professional fighters. You don't want that to happen in your fighter regardless of their experience. So you want to manage as many details and control as many things as possible. Get them used to fighting as a professional. Getting them used to traveling, sleeping in a different bed, being away from their family. Um, a lot of people invite their whole neighborhood to their pro debut and they put unnecessary pressure. Maybe the first fight is better to be out of town, away from their family and friends. So for the managers, for the trainers, you really have to manage as many of these details and control as possible so your fighter can be the most comfortable. You want to get him to be his best and he's going to be nervous. Don't let him also be worried about his hands don't feel wrapped correctly or these shoes aren't right. Get the right shoes, get them in them a couple days before, warm up and break those shoes in. The, the, the shorts, they're custom made, they got his sponsor's logo, they got the colors, but they don't fit right. Make sure he's warmed up and moved around them. Get all this under wraps in these early fights when the opponents aren't so great. And then as you build the opponents, you're looking at a variety of styles and qualities of opponents so that when you fight for the world title, you're ready to handle power punchers, speed, southpaw, orthodox, tall fighters, short fighters, pressure fighters, boxers, movers, and runners. So you're, you're developing the experience, the on-the-job experience with different level, different style, different opponents for him to adapt to middle of the fight, for the trainer to adapt to middle of the fight, to make adjustments. Everybody's learning and experiencing and getting better as a team together and if you don't use those early fights to develop this, you won't be ready for the big time. And that is my tip of the week. I am the greatest. Yeah.